In this video, I'm going to show you how to use your Comdata Smart Auth system. The system is not connected to the pumps. It's only used for authorization on fleet cards after the driver is done fueling. We're going to start off by showing you how to update your fuel prices. Click on the Management button. Enter in your password and then press Enter. And then press Update Fuel Prices. Now anytime that you update your fuel prices in your regular register, you're going to want to update the prices in your Com Data system as well. Once you have the fuel prices entered, hit Next. This page confirms that the prices that you have are correct. If they're not, hit Back and re-enter them. In this case, we'll hit Next. Now it's telling you that the fuel prices have been saved, but they were not sent to the pumps, simply because we do not control the pumps. On this list, it's going to send the fuel prices to com data. Um, this is going to fail because I'm not actually connected to a network. It's just for training purposes. Once you're done, hit finish and then exit. The next feature that I'll show you is how to start a shift. It's just as simple as hitting new shift, typing in your password, hitting enter, and then it'll tell you to starting a new shift, press finish to complete the requested operation, hit finish. And then now I will sign in to the point of sale. Next, I'm going to show you how to create a transaction on the Smart Auth system. So after the driver has finished fueling, what you're going to want to do is take the transaction from your other register and create the transaction on your Trendar system. So you'll start off by pressing Fuel, select whichever pump number they were on, hit Next. And then here you'll want to enter in the gallon amount or the dollar amount. You don't have to do both. In this case, we're just going to put in a quantity. Finish. The transaction will populate in the middle of the field. You'll notice that the balance due. You just want to make sure that matches what your register has. At that point, you're going to swipe the driver's fleet card. Next, you'll want to enter in any information that the driver will need. Even though there's three columns of information here, the, most of the time the drivers only need about four or five things. Um, just ask them what they need for their ticket and they'll be able to tell you. I'm going to put in mileage, truck number, and driver ID. Now we're not connected to a network, so this transaction is going to fail. You'll notice that right below transaction failed, it says error fuel desk could not communicate with modem process. If there was a problem with any of the information that was entered in, say the truck number was wrong or the driver ID, it would say invalid truck number, invalid driver ID. With the failed transaction, you have different options. Retry now just lets you re-input any information that might have been entered incorrectly. Edit products will go back into the ticket. If you press retry later, the system will hold the transaction. So say if the driver has to make a phone call to his company and you're ready to retry, you don't have to create the entire transaction over from scratch. Um, I'll show you how to access that later in the transaction button. There's also the save manual auth button. That should only be used if you call to get an authorization number from the processor. I'm going to hit retry later. Now you notice that that transaction has disappeared. In order to bring that transaction back up, you're going to hit the transaction button and then retry and it repopulates the transaction. Speaking of the transaction button, you see that you have reprint void retry. In order to reprint a past transaction, you will use the filters on the left hand side of the screen once you find the transaction you want to reprint, select it, and then select the printer that you want to print to. A thermal printer is a small receipt. The dot matrix printer is the large Okie data printer. The buttons on the left hand side of the screen are generic department buttons. They do not have a price assigned to them. So what you will do is in order to use those, you just type in a price and then press the button. If you press a button before you enter a price, you'll notice that it'll give you an error and tell you you need to enter in the price first. If a driver requests a big ticket, meaning that he paid cash or credit on the other point of sale, 
In order to make them a ticket, you'll just do the same thing you did before. Fuel. The pump. Next. Gallon amount. But instead of swiping your car, you're going to hit the exact cash button. And then you just ask the driver what they need on their ticket. Company name, truck number. Once you're done, hit authorize. And then select which printer you'd like it to go to. Next, I'm going to show you how to close the shift and close the business day on the point of sale. You're going to start off by pressing the close shift button. Select your name, put in your password, press enter, and finish. After you have closed the shift, what you'll do next is press close the business day. Select your name, put in your password, press enter. And then from there, all you have to do is just say yes to the three questions that come up. Once you're done, the reports will print out on your thermal printer, and then you'll be able to start a new shift. Thank you for watching this instructional video. If you have any questions, please feel free to call us at 1-800-833-8680.